Uh, this talk will be about container management with liballocage, um, which is a tool that heavily uses FreeBSD operating system features to um, yeah, manage containers and uh, make it easy for users to deploy them. Um, and also it's about how to script them uh, to use it in an automated system. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Stefan Grünke. Um, I nowadays work as a security consultant and penetration tester. Um, I'm an independent FOSS developer and the author of libaokage, um, the tool that I want to demonstrate to you uh, during this talk. Uh, yeah, what is libaokage? Okay? Uh, what is iocage? So first of all, iocage is a container management based on FreeBSD, as mentioned. Um, and it has two assumptions. So it wants you to configure a network, and it wants you uh, also to provide uh, ZFS storage. Um, that are the two main assumptions that you need to have on this host, and the rest is uh, up to the tool uh, that I'm going to introduce. <clears throat> so, um, oh. internet works. So, um, there are several versions of IOKH available um, out there. So, um, it started uh, with the shell implementation uh, that was written by Brandon and Peter Toth. Um, there are two versions available. One of them was in the packages, so you might know already that package and have used it. Um, there was some fork from that pro project, um, which is called iOS Cell, um, and there is also the newer Python implementation that Brandon wrote. Um, he might be here in the audience, so you might spot him. <laughs> That's very nice. So, um, and my way into this project uh, was kind of an accident. Um, so, I was using IOCage, so I got re got it recommended, and as soon as I deployed it to production, I got some issues with the VNet implementation, because I started heavily uh, tear downs and uh, starts off jails, and suddenly my host crashed. Um, I couldn't reproduce it really, um, so I digged into the code and uh, did some optimizations to speed up the crashes, um, so that I can maybe show. <laughs> yeah, sure. I wanted to see um, what is crashing my host because that was a complex software and I exactly wanted to nail down what the step was that caused the, caused the issues. So it basically started with some modifications um, that were um, yeah, optimizations of that, um, of that code. So um, yeah, there was a sudden problem because the, the size of this pull request that I opened up um, went up to 10,000 lines of code changed and GitHub didn't like it. So I saw that angry unicorn all the time. So uh, that was the point where we decided to fork uh, the library that I was started to working on um, and yeah, make it a separate project that we later on um, are merging with a command line tool. Um, so that's basically my way into the project uh, and how it started. And uh, yeah, what do we have now? So libio catch. It's again a container management, yet another one. <laughs> Um, which is following the standards that were defined by the previous IOCAGE implementations. Um, the newer changes is it's an object-oriented Python implementation um, that is made for being used programmatically rather than uh, just by command line. And um, the, def the project has some, um, some focus on security. It should be very reliable uh, and performant because um, my goal was to use JS heavily. So for everything that I can ca encapsulate, I wanted to use JS. Um, so um, there were some features among the way um, that I'm going to introduce today. Uh, for example, it, the tool should be compatible with all other IOCache variants that you have seen before, so that you can easily uh, install it in your host and use whatever machines you had before. Um, and also, um, it ships with the command line client um, that I'm basically using for testing because uh, the easiest way of doing integration tests is using it on your own systems. <laughs> uh, yeah. Several other features that came uh, as an addition to the previous IOCAGE implementations were filter globbing. Um, we worked on secure VNet implementations. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that uh, later on. Um, I'm going to show one-shot jails, which are ephemeral um, jail executions of commands. Um, we will work with uh, multiple ZFS sources um, nest the jails so that you can run IOCage within an IOCage container. That means if you want to share permissions something, then you can uh, pretty easily restrict them. Um, we do some kind of advanced resource limits uh, that allow you to um, limit the resources of a single jail or processes within the jail. Um, and the last feature I want to show you today uh, are differential backups where you can uh, take small snapshots uh, that are compared to the previous release version and export them to 
stored in other hosts. So, how does it work? First of all, there are um, three major versions that uh, this library aims to support, um, which is the IOKH legacy implementation that was available in the packages. It's called uh, version 176. Um, there is also the master branch, sorry, the developed branch of this repository. Um, it uses kind of a different storage format. The first implementation written in shell uh, was using ZFS properties um, uh, to store the configurations of those jails. Uh, later on, it moved to UCL files, and the newest implementation, Python, um, is using a JSON file. So, um, the libiocache abstracts that, that detects what you have installed in your system, and allows you to uh, even create new jails that are compatible with the old implementations. Later on, we will see how to mix them, um, so that you can, uh, yeah, use whatever you want and consolidate that on one single host. Um, there is some feature uh, for the CLI tool. Maybe you know from know it from IOCatch. Um, this tool is called IOC, um, and we use it for testing, as mentioned. Um, globbing allows you to uh, select multiple jails uh, jails at the same time. So you can say, I want to have every jail uh, listed that uh, begins with BSD can. Later on, you can also say, I want to have every jail that um, that uses two different tags at the same time. And also, you can have an OR uh, connection between them. So, uh, let me demonstrate how this could work. So, there is IOC, the command line tool, and you get a nice output here. We have no jails available, uh, but we have an RES that you can list. So, let's create a jail. We usually create base jails because they're a bit sl slimmer and it's easier to export them. So um, that's the dash B flag. Um, do, you, do you use jails.conf at all? Or? Uh, I do, but later on it's automated in the, in the way of starting and stopping them. So the jail.conf is created when you start or interact with the jail um, for the use case. So um, that was the creation of, of the first jail. Um, and we do an IOS, IOC list again. Let's create a second one. Okay, so the, the reason I ask is that when you use, if you want to use something like Ansible, it has a jail connector. Which okay. Means that you can interact with the jail directly. Mm -hmm. and you use jail.com to find the, the names and, and things. Yeah, usually uh, they are represented in JLS, so when we start the jail, you will see them show up. Um, I'm not sure if you could use the, oh no, it's not storing persistently in the jail.conf. Um, every configuration of every jail is stored among in the, in the data set of the jail. So that means you can easily send them to other hosts and execute them there. That was the benefit. Um, there is no manif uh, manual configuration necessary for doing this. Um, and we can maybe have a look at the, at the folder. Uh, catch JS. Oh. OK, let's do it later. So um, we have two jails, and they have a configuration. They come with very basic standards um, defined defaults. Uh, you can set them system-wide, so if you have any preference on your host, uh, for example, you want to have VNet enabled all the time, then you can do it easily. Um, but yeah, we dig into this later. So if we want to select um, multiple jails at, jails at the same time, let's maybe pick every jail that has a specific release. So now you see every jail that has a release 11 and forward. So that's how the globbing works. And uh, you will find the documentation on that so that you can use it for every jail. It's possible to use every um, configuration variable to filter the jails uh, that is available in, in jails. So that is quite flexible to, uh, to script it also. Uh, but you will later on see how to use it from the library. So feature. Um, there was some issue I experienced in between. Um, so I said I wanted to use the jails to build secure compartments. Um, this also means that a jail um, may not change its IP address or a spoof a MAC address from other jails uh, and take over the control of the network connections. So um, it was necessary to use IPFW uh, to set up a layer 2 filtering uh, to make sure that the jail does not break out of its compartment. So for doing that, uh, I have compiled the kernel uh, having enabled the VNet feature. And uh, we want to set that on one jail. 
So what you do is you set VNet on, um, you define the interfaces. So I'm connecting this to my um, to my bridge zero, which is pre-configured. Uh, I set an IP address so that we can have some communication here. And uh, we set a default router. for, let's say, the first one. So that was the update of this jail. Um, we can check the configuration again if we list the jails. So you see there is an IP address assigned to this jail. And once we start it up, it starts with VNet feature enabled. Um, but you will notice uh, there is no secure VNet enabled. So let's, let's see what happens if you don't have it enabled. So we start up the first one and drop it into a console. So that's, uh, that's the network configuration that you see from within the jail. So you will see that we can ping the host at least. And if my mobile provider allows, then also some public host. Sure, that works. So what do we do? We just change the IP address of that, of the jail. And we will still have the network connection. And that's bad. We don't want to have that. So from within a jail, we don't trust anything that happens in a jail. Uh, it should not be possible to, to change the IP address. The same works for MAC addresses, you can imagine. Um, so how can we mitigate that? Uh, that's simple. We exit the jail again. We stop it. And we change the configuration. Uh, you will notice the little difference in the notation here. Let's first of all get the current interfaces configuration. So it uh, just has a single colon. So the new notation for setting secure VNets on, uh, set interfaces, is uh, VNet zero, colon, colon, bridge zero. Um, yeah, and we start it up again. And jump into the console. We see the same uh, configuration of that jail. Uh, we, we check that ping works. So that works, and that as well. And we now change the IP address. And now this ping is not working. So we block the traffic on layer two, um, and we can see some IPFW rules uh, that do this on the host side. Um, show. So um, right after starting the jail, before even starting and executing any service in the jail, uh, the firewall is set up, uh, and it will use the jail's JIT um, to mark it. So it's 10,017, so it means um, if you look in JLS, you will find JIT 17. Um, so that's connected to this. And um, that successfully mitigates uh, yeah, up spoofing and IP spoofing from within the jail. Um, so, great, so we can define a specific IP address and we can trust that the jail only can use that one. Great. So, that's the secure VNet feature. Um, we also support uh, one-shot jails, which are kind of thermal jails for execution. That means you can just execute it for a single command, which I personally use to alias some specific uh, command line um, uh, command line operations so that I also mount the folder that I'm currently in into the jail. So every command that I execute can only work within and live within that tree and down, but not up somewhere. So it can't affect my host at all. Um, you can combine all the features, but I want to show how the, um, how the one-shot jail works and how it looks like. So we're using the same jail as before. Um, and we stop it because we don't want to have it running. Oh, nice. So that's it. Um, and we can do if config, for example, or just ping some host. Mm. 
I shouldn't have aborted it. Okay, there might be some issue with the tear down, but I'm gonna look into this right after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's always that, so it's a highly, uh, uh, that's, that's how you demo stuff, right? Okay, so um, later on we will do some more complex tasks, uh, but let me first introduce all the features that we need for doing this. So um, maybe we can also do some timing measurement, how long it takes to do so. So let's say um, we do the IOC exec dash F, um, if config and measure the time. Nope. Ah, oh, forgot the jail again. Same mistake twice. Okay, so it's around half a second for uh, doing the whole operation, and usually it should uh, shut it down and tear it um, and tear down the jail as well. Um, okay. So that was the one-shot feature. Uh, the life cycle, yeah, as mentioned, it launches the jail, executes the command, and tears down. And also, you can attach some rollback steps. So if you, for example, have a snapshot from before the jail, you can recover to, to whatever the jail was before, which is neat, I think. Um, we nowadays also support multiple ZFS data sources. That means that you can have a very fast rate for um, um, for running your uh, very important jails, and you can also support other data sets at the same time, um, which is an enabler for, for the next feature so that you can nest uh, jails in jails. That was just mandatory to implement it. Uh, as soon as you uh, change your RC conf so that you switch from activating the ZFS pool, uh, like it was in the older uh, IOCache versions, uh, you can set multiple data sets like here. Um, and I want to demonstrate to you how that works. So, um, we look into my RC conf file, and you will see. I can't uh, noticing that you don't have IPv6 addresses. I don't have IPv6 addresses right now because I'm connected from my phone, and I want to show you. Yeah, IPv6 works, yeah. And there should be a sticker on it which says I love it, so trust me on <laughs> that. <laughs> so uh, I'm, um, I'm just enabling a second data set, and uh, if you, well, let's first disable it again. Uh, and do an IC list. Um, that's the list how it looked like before. Um, look at the full name, uh, and as soon as I enable the second data set at the same time, um, it will give me more specific names. So that means you can have in different data sets, you can have uh, jails with the same name. I wouldn't recommend to do so um, because it's kind of confusing, but you can at least still do it. Um, then, why not? Let's try it. So, yeah, we made the mistake that we have the jail with the name Stefan twice, and let's see if we can filter it. Yeah, so it gives us the ability to uh, talk to both jails at the same time. Um, yeah, also we can get rid of them at the same time. Okay, that command looks a bit strange, destroy Stefan. Anyway, uh, okay, so we got rid of the jails. And there you go. Uh, let's disable it for the moment because it should not be the focus of this talk to work with diff uh, different data sets that makes things in some places a little more complicated. Um, instead of just selecting uh, the jail's name, you can also specify the full name uh, as globbing. So that means you can say, give me every jail that works on that data set or from that data set with uh, this text enabled and so on. So you can combine the features as you like. Um, yeah, we have support for nested jails. Uh, I'm going to be lazy and copy out the, the hardest part down here. <laughs> so saves a bit of time, but we want to create a J data set somehow and uh, mount it in the J. Um, what is mandatory to support uh, nested jails? So as mentioned, the assumption from IOCache was we want to have networking and we also want to have the ZFS data set configured, so that's predefined. Um, we also need to pass through some capabilities like uh, we want to mount DevFS, NullFS, and so on. So all the features that IOCache internally uses to work uh, have to be enabled here. 
Um, but I think that's that's here almost uh, the minimal setup that you can do. Um, so, you need to set JIT on, and we have a JIT data set. Uh, this is the one we want to use for um, nesting um, within the host. So, let's create a nested JIT. Oh, we already have it. I see destroy. Paste part that worked. <laughs> <laughs> so and you will see we have access to the data set. Uh, there is some issue with the path lengths. So the first thing you should do is uh, you, sh you should use a shorter one. Um, well, that's fine, but uh, I'm going to support the older versions like. 10 and even before 2. Um, so we want to set the mount point to something short, like I see. Hang on a second. So we first need to install IOCache and uh, also get Git so that we can download it somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for the mobile connection that will take a short moment, uh, but yeah, I think they chose the feature. Um, Yes, please install it. Um, the installation process of Flipper Ocage is the same on every host, so uh, just I'm showing that in, in a nested jail, you can do it on the host system as well, like this. So what you need to do is you can check it out on Git. Um, Git clone. Okay, all right. Uh, the way to install it is just to make make install. That should be it. Comes with uh, some more dependencies, and um, as soon as this works, we can start fetching a release. Yeah, sure. So I have a PF rule enabled that gives me NAT on the jail so that I have some uplink access. Um, I would recommend to not trust anything that happens within the jail. So anything that is in the data set of a jail uh, never touches from the host side. So there should be no access. And that's also why it's restricted to have access from root. So if you're root, you can maybe see the files, but there are some uh, risks connected to it uh, that yeah are not worth the efforts. So. Yeah, it's downloading so slow that we also get a very good overview of the dependencies now. Um, so let's see if that works. Permission denied. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, it's important to set the RC conf because I already mentioned um, that this is a dependency so that you can use it within the jail. RC dataset. 
ILC. Uh, ILC is the default name so that it's compatible with all the other versions. Uh, it's not possible to run IOCache Legacy or Python IOCache uh, jails from an other data set or with a different name if you want to combine the features. Um, so if I remember correctly, that was set root jailed and we call it IOCache. There we go. Okay, let's fetch a release and move on in the slides in the meanwhile. Um, it detects the host uh, system, so it says 11.1 .1 is the one I'm running right now. Uh, just pressing enter will start and then able to download. Uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, what you see right here while installing. Um, this is a stack of nested events, so um, every event of them uh, can, or can or cannot have a rollback step so that if it fails or if any children of it fail, it will roll back uh, automatically so that you don't have any left fragments on the host if something fails. Um, in this case, I'm maybe speeding it up and not downloading any updates. Um, So in the meanwhile, this will take a moment. Uh, let's go back to the slides and see what's upcoming. So that was the host site within the jail. Uh, you saw the necessary steps already. So um, basically, it's now fetching a release and so that we can start creating jails within the jail. Um, OK, we come back to this in a moment. Um, it's also very important if you want to share resources on your on your host that you restrict what any process can do. Um, so you can use anything that is mentioned in the RCTL man page uh, to restrict what happens in a jail. And uh, the syntax also allows you to define that on a process level. Um, I think that's um, the only thing you need to do is to enable um, the feature on FreeBSD before. So, and then the last feature I'd like to show you today are differential backups. So whenever you make a backup and uh, you have set up your jail as a base release, that, mounts, uh, that means uh, the data sets are uh, mounted from the release assets. Um, let's see how this looks like. Um, what was it called again? It's called iCatch BSD can, okay. So this is how the structure looks like. Um, and uh, you will see the mounts of that jail that is running right now. So. Yeah. So it's using NullFS uh, read-only mounts to mount from the release uh, within the jail. So that means if you update the release, you can also have the updates directly in the jail. Um, once you fetch the updates, it's not necessary to give the jail internet anymore. So um, it never needs internet connection to even receive the updates from the host side. Um, since we're now fetching that uh, and installing the updates already, uh, that's not necessary. Uh, but later on, you can use the upgrade commands to upgrade the jails after you upgrade it and fetch the release again. So it's not bad to just run fetches um, Yeah, often. There are item potents, so they will detect if no change happened and inform you about this. So this will be much faster if there is, there is no update available at this time. So let's see what the release does. It's still downloading. OK. Um, in the meanwhile, we can still make a backup of this jail. So I will see export. Um, first of all, let's see what we have. We create a test file so that we see it uh, included in the backup and uh, how this works. So exit, I see stop, first one. So this will take a moment because it now compares the full uh, file system stru structure uh, using rsync uh, to the release and exports only the necessary parts of it. Okay, that's it. 
So it also bundled the, uh, the assets as a target Z file, GZ file, and we will see how large it is. Um, so I think 20k for a backup of a JL is pretty neat. Um, so um, let's get it back on the host. So I see import. Uh, you first define a new name. So uh, first other. So that's it, you have two JS. First other, it has the same configuration, so it inherits whatever you set uh, that is not defined in your defaults. So when you don't want to inherit some features, uh, you basically use more the, the host wide features. Uh, since it has the same IP address, that's something we need to change. Uh, you can also use DHCP or um, automatically assign IPv6 addresses. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier to import and export. Um, Okay, they have different IP addresses and we can start them individually. I'm using console-s, which uh, means if the gel is not running yet, then please start it for me. Uh, it's, yeah, much more convenient than type one more command. Okay, I've been using easy gel for most of my things. Okay. Uh, can I import on the uh, We didn't look into support to import other uh, gel variants. There are some steps on the IO case wiki that a user wrote. So if you create an empty jail, you could dump your easy jail into it. And as far as IO case is concerned, it's just a jail from somewhere else. So I don't know about Stefan's implementation, but mine, you just kind of ignore it at that point. It's an empty jail, so you can use the things you do. But we're not aware uh, where it came from, so like upgrade and stuff won't work. <coughs> The thing is, by, by default, DDGL use a base gel that is similar to the new yeah. one, which makes it more complicated. Okay, you can actually open for DDGL and for talking to it to contribute on the issue. <laughs> yep. So, DDGL is more or less that. I guess people use it. So, um, so we have the other jail and also checked if the networking still works. 4201. Yes, so that does it. Um, this now means that both jails are running in the secure VNet mode so that um, yeah, you can't access the IP address and the traffic from the other jail, which is neat. Um, let's see how far the release is now. Okay, we failed doing the updates. Um, let's see if we have the release available anyway. And look into the reason later. Uh, so we have a release. Let's create a jail. Um, and please keep in mind that we are working in the nested host here. Uh, yep, there we go. So we don't have VNet enabled, so it will see all the interfaces from the host, but uh, that's some different configuration. You can you can check it out yourself, I guess, how this works. Okay, that were the features that I wanted to show you uh, that we need for later on to implement a service with it. Um, so in this case, let's maybe talk about the security model uh, that we assume. So we don't want to see that doing uh, happening to our hosts. Um, so what do we do to prevent it? One question? So, um, we first of all, we verify all the downloaded assets that we have and make sure that uh, there is nothing going on with it, which means we um, check release signatures um, and also look into the asset contents so that nobody, for example, uh, uses sim links to extract uh, to some destination on our hosts because uh, fetching releases is executed on the host side, and that's the dangerous part too. Um, yeah, as mentioned, we do support offline jail updates so that jails never have to see the internet or any network connection. Um, <coughs> On every fetch operation, we do a, a EOL check so that you, we can warn and inform you that you have outdated uh, releases in use uh, and don't receive res security updates. Um, as mentioned also, um, every bit of data within a jail is untrusted, so we never will touch whatever, whatever happens inside. Even after an update, we roll back to the previous state before the update, even though it's read-only mounted. Um, 
everything that you can set up is coming with secure defaults. So I would not uh, make anything default uh, in this configuration that can harm your host uh, or any other jail. Uh, if you want to do so, um, there are several options available uh, that you can use to decrease that security level. Uh, but please do it on purpose if you really need it. Um, there is hardened BSD support as well. So uh, that's also something if you're uh, running that operating system, then um, feel free to use it. Um, that was also done on the other IOK variants. So I like that very much. Um, and yeah, the secure VNet feature helps you to protect uh, your network within the jails. Um, yeah, besides the security, um, there is safety, um, which means that if you do any operations, uh, changes to a jail should only be done if you really intend to do so. So if you use a create command, of course, it creates some data sets. If you use destroy, it will ask you if you really want to use uh, to delete these jails. Um, and I think the other operations that writes to a jail is uh, set. Unless that, uh, you don't want to have any changes, so that means listing, starting, stopping. It should not affect uh, the host site and should not break your jails. That means if you have a legacy implementation and you want to check it out, if libreocage works with uh, your jail setup, then you can safely do it as long as you don't do any writing operations here. Um, that reminds me to mark them somehow in the documentation what are writing operations, but there are just a few. So most of the features you can safely use. Um, I was also concerned to give some uh, reasonable warnings and errors. So whenever you have something not configured on the host, it will leave you with a short but significant message um, about what, uh, what you need to change to use that feature. For example, if you don't have IPW, uh, IPFW enabled, it will not let you use a secure VNet. It will just refuse to start the jails instead of falling back to disabling the firewall. So that from a safety perspective. So there is the command line interface. You have, me, have seen me using it uh, several times. Um, and it's very inviting to maybe use it for scripting, but I don't recommend to do so. Um, because we will definitely change the, the outputs of that. So um, the, this here, this stack, as you saw. Oh, come on. So let's go back a bit in history and see how this looked like when fetching the release. So this stack here. Um, it's not meant to be human readable. So you see the bare events. Uh, we, don't, we didn't care about translations yet. There will be translations eventually um, that are easier to read. But in this case, uh, what does the stack tell you? It tells you that the fetch release event um, worked on an 11.1 um, release. Um, the operation was OK, so it was downloaded successfully. It took uh, about 180 seconds to succeed, and it had four, um, uh, four events inside it. So that means if that events or some event within fails, all the four get rolled back uh, to, to this point. Um, it will say skipped whenever you had already a release fetched or if you don't need to install updates or anything can be omitted. Um, and um, this is just the implementation for the command line. It's pretty easy to expose that via HTTP or something so that you can build a web server from it, which allows you to remotely control the jails uh, without giving any shell access to the host. Um, but there is no reference implementation yet. Uh, we will, um, as the last step of this talk, we will implement some service like this. So um, you will find the help by entering IC help. Oh, no. Not within a nested jail. It was one inception too much. So there is the help, and that is basically my excuse to not have a, a full documentation on all the features, because you should be able to use it um, from the command line. So you will also find help for every command. So whenever you're interested how to start a jail, you can get help on this, which option will allow you that. So um, the current implementation is stateless. That means every time you execute the command, it executes it as uh, the system was, was never touched before. It's not the fastest uh, that you can do, so demonizing that is uh, much faster later on. Um, but it's pretty simple and uh, doesn't need much maintenance to do so. It's not possible to execute commands or not recommended to use commands concurrently. Um, that's just because of the statelessness. We don't track any state uh, if some command is still running or something. So I would recommend just to use one terminal and not uh, open several at the same time. So one administrator on the host is enough for now using the command line. Uh, 
Yes, and then there is the Python library, the real reason behind this too, because the command line is just the things that are used to test and maintain some machines. But even more interesting is how the library is built. Uh, it's designed object-oriented so that you really have an object that is called jail uh, that does what it promises to do. Uh, you have network and several other things, and if we have the time, I will uh, walk through the code at some interesting places. Um, there is some quality assurance process, which is not complete yet, uh, but we have some nice metrics. Uh, there is strong typing on all Python classes and all interfaces. Um, we comply with the code style PEP8, um, and we also do some static code analysis uh, using Flake8, MyPy, Bandit for security checks, and so on. Um, all public interfaces are documented on that uh, library, um, and we'll, we'll see that right now. So how can you use it from Python? Um, you just drop into Python 3 and say import IOCache. Um, let's get some help what IOCache does. So basically, uh, you find the find the doc strings, and uh, I hope they're useful for you. If not, then please leave me an issue, and I will improve them somehow. So that's a great, really nice feedback. So we saw jails earlier. So let's see here. Let's, for example, attempt to stop the nested host somewhere. So what you say is you say jail equals iocache dot jail. And now we have access to the jail um, representing that nested host. Um, let's maybe get the full name. Uh, we can also get, an, get a dump of the configuration. So that are all configuration options that are currently set on this jail um, for programmatic access. Um, and let's maybe just stop it. OK. What you're seeing right now is the simplified implementation, which is more human friendly. Um, all the Python classes are implemented in a generative way so that you um, can, can get asynchronous access to them. Um, I will show, show also how this works. Um, let's do the same, so with a jail generator instead of a jail. Uh, the jail itself, so iocage.jail, inherits from the jail generator. So if you would check as Oh, no. Anyway. Uh, okay, then let's do the same. So instead of using the shortcut here, I catch jail, we use the lib, um, jail.jlgenerator. And it's now not so simple because if you have an. Um, have a generator in Python, you need to consume it, because otherwise it will just stuck and wait for more operations. So um, let's make a very basic tool that prints us the same events as we saw before. Um, we want to have the start operation, so the events are jail.start. Nothing happened yet, and for event in events, Oh, the jail is already running, so nice complaint. Um, then let's do the opposite and stop it instead. There you go. So this works async, and that makes it much faster to, to script the daemon for it um, than waiting for the full completion of the command execution. <coughs> OK, so um, yeah. Uh, there's some other code quality metrics. Um, kudos to Igor Galic, um, who does pretty good code reviews all the time. So it's very great to have somebody uh, available to check uh, the code quality. And you can't imagine how many mistakes you find uh, just by having somebody else reading your code and commenting on that. So uh, thanks for that, Igor. Um, some upcoming metrics, um, we are currently working towards an alpha release, which means that we want to make the API consistent and stable, um, that there are no more changes in the future. So as soon as you, we move from the alpha to a beta version, uh, you can be sure that we don't make heavy changes to the commands anymore. Um, and there are some features missing. Um, there is a plugin feature where you can, um, for example, use Ansible uh, to provision your JS and define that. Uh, it was done in other Python implementations yet, but it's not implemented here yet. And we also give you a command to migrate from older jails to the newer ones. As mentioned, we're compatible. Uh, that means that you um, that you can work with existing jails and you don't change the way they, they are set up. So when they use ZFS uh, to store the properties, you will continue doing that. Um, 
so that you don't break anything on your host. Um, with the migration feature, I would say we reached the alpha release because that en enables you to entirely move to IOC and Lipper Orcage if you want to. And at the same time, we want to establish integration tests. Um, there is some problem because there is no build service available uh, that uses FreeBSD. Uh, so Travis doesn't, doesn't allow us to do that. So we can't run integration tests from here. And um, I'm working on a, a service that allows you to do that. Um, but it's using Lipper Orcage. So there is a head and neck problem right now. OK, um, then let's maybe dive into the, the more complex demo. We want to do a very vulnerable service. So whatever you post to it um, is supposed to be executed, and uh, you want to have to return as HTTP. Um, we use the one-shot jail feature for that so that it's um, very fast, and we can tear down the jail afterwards. And uh, I'd like to show you how that works in the library, and we can write a small Python script, hopefully small, yeah. So we start an empty Python project, and the first thing we do is we import IOCage. The other thing we do, we want to have a web server, so we do uh, from HTTP.server, we import um, base HTTP request handler and an HTTP server, and we inherit from that. So we do a class. Um, Inheriting from this uh, base HTTP request handler. That's a long word. And we just want to uh, do post. So this is how a standard web server in Python looks like. And um, let's get the post uh, content of that request that comes to the server by um, doing this, post data equals. Yeah, and we have to trust the content length somehow, um, but I think it's fine for the demo here. So we have to post data. That's what we want to execute within the command. Um, let's do a try catch block, because if the command fails, we want to respond with a different HTTP code than if it succeeded, so that you can see if your command succeeded or not. Um, you have seen earlier how to set up a jail, so um, iocage.jail. Um, in this case, we want to create a pristine jail. So it was never seen in the host, and we want to create it from something. So instead of giving it just a name, you can give it a dict structure uh, and say name is uh, shell service. So at the same time, we use vnet, uh, true, and we set an IP address. Have a default router. Mm, and we need to define the interfaces so that we use secure VNet. That should be it. Um, oh. Yeah, that was intentionally <laughs> just a test for you. Thanks. <laughs> That's why you have code reviews. For real, yeah. Total recommendation to do so. Um, after the dict, we want to say that it's new because otherwise it will um, complain that the jail is not existing. So that enables us to create a jail that is not existing on the file system yet. Um, right after we have access to the object, uh, we want to create it from a specific release, 11.1, because we have that on the host and I don't want to fetch another one. Um, OK, so at this point, the jail was created. Um, and we, yeah, the thing that we want to send to the uh, to the requester is the response body, which is directly jail dot fork exec um, post data dot decode utf eight because that's how Python wants it. Um, in case it worked and we didn't fail, uh, the response um, status will be two hundred. In case it didn't succeed, um, the error message will be uh, the response instead. Yeah. 
I don't know what. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure. And whatever happens after that, that happens finally, we do j dot stop. Force is always a great idea here because we would really want to make sure it's teared down and stopped. Anything, if it's stuck on the halfway, that does it anyway. Uh, jail dot destroy, and it's gone from the file system again afterwards. So that's the jail part, and the rest is a bit of web server hacking. Um, so let's maybe say uh, self dot w file bright, and we give whatever the response body is uh, encode utf8 encoded. We also say self dot So, um, okay, to start up the server and make it listen to some port, we need to uh, write some more scripts. So, HTTPD is the HTTP server. Um, for now, it should be listening on my local host system because I don't trust my mobile phone connection right now on port 8080. And we use our handler that we uh, created before. To get some feedback, we want to print um, listening to HTTP. Of course, an F string, so that we can use variables. That should be it. Okay, so um, let's see what happens when we execute it. Wow, okay. Uh, on nope. here. So we call. Um, if we request, yeah, it doesn't accept get, so we have to use post somehow. Um, yeah, a little bit more space is needed. Um, let's first of all do an ls. That happened in the jail, so it started up the jail, uh, created it from the release, executed the command, and teared it down again. Um, it's also interesting to do some timing measurement, um, so please keep in mind it's my notebook, but um, it should be it. Something around uh, half a second for the full take um, on that is how you can write the daemon yourself. So I really emphasize you to, to use the Python library rather than the command line tool for doing these operations. It's much more fun, and also Python is very slow in loading modules, so that's something I figured out. And um, if you compare that to the previous execute the command, it's, I think, half of the time could be just saved by using a daemon implementation like this. It's planned to do so, um, but it's not in the main focus yet because we want to stabilize the command line tool and the uh, library API. So your feedback is super welcome on, on doing this because uh, that will all be turned in, in improvements for the software. So that was the demo of the one-shot jails uh, using an HTTP server. And um, if you found a bug, please go to the website and uh, feel free to, uh, to open a new issue. And we also love pull requests. Thank you very much. So if there are any questions, I'm uh, happy to answer them for you. All right. Yeah. No, you go ahead. <laughs> Please. Okay. So this is the Python is only being used um, on the host yeah. in order to enable. Yeah, sure. Uh, Python is only used on the host side, and uh, for now there is also planned to rewrite it in Rust because I, I hope that uh, things will get much faster using that. Um, but for now, I think a reference implementation in Python is something we can agree on, and it uh, should be straightforward for people to, to read the sources.
Yeah, so the, the, the little performance optimizations on top of all that uh, are not what we have in the main focus right now. So um, it's, it's okay to, you can parallelize the execution of some commands and you can even still do more improvements, but I think a stable interface that is user friendly is more important than the last bits of uh, performance here. Any other questions? Okay then, thanks for listening.